2006 Toyota Matrix. I'm going to install a new radio. This is a dual XDM270 that I got with a kit. All this stuff here from Crutchfield for $44. That includes the, the radio unit. The, so all this is what came with the radio. The Toyota harness. And then this dash kit. So uh, this also they give you you print out these instructions. There's a lot of parts in this dash kit, but this is the part that is gonna make the biggest difference because as you can see, there's this pocket down on the bottom, which the Matrix doesn't have because the standard, the, the factory radio in the Matrix, it's this size. It takes up this whole face area, even though it's just a CD player and a radio. So this uh, radio that I have here, it has, a CD player and it has a place to plug in an aux cable and a USB and so the reason I'm replacing it is because I want to have an aux cable and I also want to have a pocket there's no pocket to put things like your phone and whatnot on the matrix if you order a radio from Crutchfield they will give you for either free or really cheap the mounting kit that you might need for the dash and the harness because the harness coming in to the Toyota radio is going to be a Toyota harness so the reason you need this different harness is because you're going to tie those wires to the harness that came with the radio so that's the first thing to do if you look at the instructions that they email you you'll see a page like this which is giving the explanation for the Toyota pinout on these two harnesses that you'll see on the back of your radio when you open up this harness adapter that they send you You'll see inside, it has these two harnesses. And see this, this one here is that one. One here is that one. So this diagram is just showing you what each one of these different colored wires corresponds to. It's really neat on the Toyota because all the colors are actually the same. This harness here is the harness that you'll get which will come with the radio. So you see it's different because they're all coming in here. So it's just got one connector on the back of the radio. When you pull out your when you pull out your Toyota radio, you're gonna have two connectors that you're gonna disconnect. When you put in the new one, you're only gonna have one. So in order for those wires to go where they need to be, that's why you have this harness adapter. So if you look in the instructions that they give from the actual radio company. There's a page here where it shows it shows the colors and these colors all happen to match for the Toyota. I don't know if that's like that on a lot of different cars. I've only ever done Toyotas but for example if we look at that first one red is 12 volt ignition and accessory and if we look down here red is 12 volt switched power. Switched power is the same as ignition and then our yellow is 12 volt constant power, and our yellow up here is 12 volt memory. Memory is the same as constant power. It's supplying power to the radio all the time so that uh, it can remember the, the settings that you put into it and the clock time. White is front left speaker positive, and here white is front left speaker plus sign. Plus sign means positive. Go through this whole thing. And you'll see that it matches, the, all the colors match. So all you have to do is to connect the colors. You connect these ends to these ends. You can either do that with a soldering iron or you can do it by splicing. So when you pull these little insulators, they already cut them, it's kind of nice. So you just have to pull them off. Um, you'll see the the wires here and the wires on the other harness and you're just going to lay them on top of each other slightly and interlace them and then twist them and you can get a little cap like this um, a, you can get these at Walmart or wherever and you put it on and twist it the other method is you could solder it and either way you want to go around it with some um, zip ties and some electrical tape too which I'll show next but pretty straightforward 
I like to have a little more than they're showing here, so I'm actually just going to cut this insulation here so I have it a, more about the same length as that. You can see the wires are just twisted towards each other like that. And then if I can do this with the other hand, you're just going to put this on and twist it. And as you're twisting it, you'll feel the resistance. keep twisting it. After you get the cap on, you can go around with a little bit of electrical tape and then I like to put a couple zip ties that really keeps those wires together so you don't have any movement at all. So remember this thing is going to be shaking around in the dash there and it's going to heat up when it gets warm and shrink a little when it cools down. So just make sure that you've got some way of fastening these wires together down here. I only have two of the right size of these little end connectors. Um, they have like one of these other little ones and these are too big and these are too big. And those are way too big and stuff. So uh, I do have some heat shrink. So I'm just going to solder the rest of them. But this is much faster and I think easier and also cleaner. And it works just fine. So if you want to just get a box of these end connectors, just get the smaller sized ones. These even are, these work for these um, these wires, but I could even go a size smaller and it would be fine. And you'll just remember that you need, um, what, 12. Okay, when you're hooking up your harness here, you're going to notice that the uh, the harness that comes with the radio doesn't have an orange with white line wire on it. And that's okay because that's for illumination. So that just means the radio doesn't have it, but you will see it over here on your Toyota harness. So all you have to do is just fold this, fold this bat like that, cut the wire, cover it in electrical tape, and you're fine. You don't need to connect it. Also, I'm going to connect this, these blue, but I don't actually think they do anything on the matrix because this is for, the pinout says it's for power antenna, and my matrix at least does not have a power antenna, so maybe some of them do, but mine doesn't. But I'm going to connect them anyway. So that's just what I did with that illumination wire since there's nowhere for it to go on the other harness. Over to the radio, we just have to remove a few things here. This little screw here, that screw there that screw there. Back in the cab you want to make sure you take your CD out and then we're going to disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery we'll just use a 12 millimeter and put it right on here and just loosen this up. When you're using metal tools near the battery just make sure that you don't accidentally span. If you if you didn't have one of these red insulators over here, just make sure when you're using a metal tool around the battery that you don't accidentally span the negative and positive because you'll uh, cause a short and you can burn your hand pretty seriously. So we'll just loosen that enough that we can take that off and then we'll tuck it in down here somewhere where it's not gonna fly. I guess over here is better. Put it somewhere where you know it's not going to accidentally fly up and touch it again because all it needs to do is touch that to close that circuit up. A little dark because obviously we don't have power in here but we're just going to reach under. You just reach under with your hands or you can use a pry tool. And you'll see right like that this just comes right out. Okay. On the back here you can see you're just going to have to unplug this here and that there. Okay, actually I'm going to disconnect this because it's going to make it easier. So I'm just going to put my finger in on this here, right there. And this one, it's on the top. There's the back of the panel so you can see where these clips are. Okay, next we're going to take that 10 millimeter with an extension. And we're going to take that bolt there this bolt here, this bolt here, and that bolt back there. So I, I got a magnet tool 
because I have a feeling that bolt's going to want to fall down. These are actually screws, not bolts, so don't back them out too much. Look at that. This one back over here, you just want to barely back it out and then stick your magnet tool in there and try to grab it. Looks like over here that we can just push this off. Looks like the radio doesn't come out too far, but it still comes out far enough that you can get back in here and unplug those. This is the antenna. This is the antenna. This is just going to pull out. And this is the first harness. Looks like, okay, it's on the bottom. I can feel it on the bottom of my finger. Radio is out now. You can see that clips, the little, not clips, uh, the little hinge there. You just press this and on the same one here, so it's on the bottom. It was plugging just like that to the radio. Next, if you open up the bag that's got the mounting kit in it, and pull out the instructions, you'll see all the different models that this suits. So, skip to the part for the matrix, because it'll show you which parts you need to take out. So you're just going to sort through the box, and you're going to look for the little part that says ITP975. That's this part right here. It might already kind of be in, in yours like that. Mine was. Parts that you're going to grab are labeled 4BKT97R for right and L for left. There it is right there, 4BKT975L, and then the other one is marked R, and this little part just comes off. Uh, this was broken off in the bag, but it, it doesn't matter. You, you just, uh, you're going to break it off anyway. So grab those parts out. And this piece will probably be on the new radio like that. It'll uh, probably be sitting in there like that in the packaging. Just take it out, because now you're going to put this in here. And I've found that it's just a tiny bit off. This lip here is just a little too big. So I'm just going to file this down some, a little on each side, until I can get that to fit. Yours might not be that way. Yours might just drop right in. But I'm just going to file it a little bit. I just had to file a little bit on that edge inside there on the plastic, and then up on the top on each side. And once I did that, it would slide in, so not too bad. So that's step one, insert the sleeve from your new radio into the radio opening of the installation kit. Step two is to press the tabs from inside the sleeves, opening upward, outward, and downward to secure the sleeve to the installation kit. What it's talking about here is all of these little features. These are so you can deform them like this push them up, for example, like I'm doing with my finger here, kind of hard to do with one hand, to push them up so that it doesn't slide out. So you're going to push these up here and there. All right, now we're going to modify this bracket since this bracket works for many different models. It says here, remove shaded and mounting brackets for matrix application. So both of these whole things, we're going to remove the whole things. You can see that's how it's supposed to look when it's done. The other brackets that we're supposed to remove on each of these pieces, for example, this is the right, the right piece. That's this piece here. You can see we're supposed to remove this. So look, that, that, and that, 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 and that. So before you go removing these, just so you know, what you're trying to do is come up with this bracket here. Ideally, if you were just installing a double din, you could just take this bracket off and put it on your new. But since this comes in front of the trim here, and this is going to be tucking behind the trim here, these little things, you can uh, take them off. That's for if you're ISO mounting it. And ISO just means, it says in the beginning of the book, ISO just means that you don't have a sleeve available. So if you didn't have one of these sleeves, then you could uh, use those clips. I just put some white tape on the tabs that I need to remove so that I don't get mistaken and lose track of where I am and cut off an important tab. But as you can see, so here's the left side, that picture there, this top one 
bottom and side, top, bottom, or top, bottom, side. And then for the uh, right side panel, I laid in that same orientation. It's like so. And so you can see I have the tabs, the white tabs, in the same places as those um, shaded ones. I had to take the sleeve out because once I put this on, there's this little tab down here where my finger is. And on mine, it wasn't quite sliding in. It would uh, push up against it, but not quite slide in. So I'm going to try... By this. I'm going to try by putting this on first and then sliding that back in. This goes like this. And you're going to put it on what you're lining up. There's this hole in the back. Put this hole right here. And then down here, this tab here is going to slide in between there. That little tab there is going to go in this little spot right here. You can sort of see right here where my finger is is where that tab goes. And then up on the top, there's a tab that fits in right there. This is the end goal that you're trying to reach uh, once you have it around. And these are nicely lined up. You're going to use the smaller screws. They give you two sets of screws. These screws must be for this ISO mount because you see these are not countersunk. But these little screws are countersink screws. And you can see that you need a countersink screw here because that's shaped like a nice cone. So put those in. Don't do them too tight because you'll break the plastic. And then you want everything to be lined up. It is a little tricky. You have to be patient, don't force stuff because it's plastic, but it does work. Um, let's see, right here, this cylindrical portion here, you want to make sure that you're on the outside of that. The same here, you're on the outside, so the, this is the mounting bracket here. See that how that moves? That's the mounting bracket. You want to make sure that little tab is in there. Let's see, you can see it more on this side. Right there, the tab. Right there. That tab there. This has a lot of dust on it from sawing. I'll have to wash this thing off. And then on the other side, that tab. And that tab. And then down on the bottom here, you're lined up there with that tab. Once you have it together, it is actually pretty solid feeling. It feels pretty rigid. So if it feels kind of wobbly, uh, you might not have it together right. I, I don't know if this is the fault of the company that makes the radio and, and the DIN sleeve, or if it's the fault of the company that makes the plastic insert thing, or the plastic uh, dash kit thing, but this, these just aren't readily compatible. I had to go back and file this whole ramp here and here and it just barely fits. So in the end, don't put this thing in first. Put the sides in first, then come back and do just these top tabs, and you're not gonna be able to do them side tabs because uh, this is in the way. And also in the process of filing it, I accidentally broke this over here. So I broke that tab there. Um, what I'm gonna do, since I have it out, I'm just gonna epoxy it. Or maybe I'll just put a piece of seal tight here. I might just do a piece of seal tight. It just needs to hold. It's okay if it'll be a little bit flexible. But yeah, that's what's going on. So now then once you have that file down and you can get this sleeve in, then you can go ahead and put the radio in. The radio slid in very well and it snapped in place. And then this is just that little trim piece that you put on after you get the radio in. So it looks nice. I like the way it looks. Back in the cab, we have the harness here. So we're going to plug these sides into their corresponding sides on the Toyota harness. And then this is going to plug into the back of the radio, the only place that it can. I went around this with some seal tight to prevent that bracket from breaking again. Right here, let's see here. 
This here is where the antenna goes, and that there is where the electrical connection goes. The harness is connected. I just put a zip tie around here to kind of keep these together, make it a little bit easier to find a place for them. So I'll push that back in and then connect this. And then the antenna isn't going to be any longer, so connect that last. It lines up quite well. Um, I have the screws back in, one here, the other down there, one here, and then that real hard to get one down there. That one back there, I'm just using an 8 inch extension with the, I'm using a deep socket, you don't need a deep socket. You might want to tie a string to it, some dental floss or something. So in case you drop it, you can pull it out. When you tighten these four bolts, don't tighten one all the way down. Tighten each a little bit, kind of going across ways till you have it just right. And don't tack them down too much. It's plastic. You just, you just need it so it's not going to move and vibrate. Now you can put that panel back on, hook up all the connectors. You put this trim panel on, line up these top two tabs up here. Line those up first, get it in. Then push it down and just snap the rest of them in all the way around the perimeter. Okay. And that, that's the end product. That's how it looks. Uh, I like it. I like having a pocket here because I have that on my RAV4. It's a good place to put a cell phone or like a pen. I went ahead and hooked in the battery so we can turn it on and see. My clock works now because uh, I fixed the clock while I had it out. You just resolder those resistors. It works. I put a disc in there. And then if you press this button that says mode, it will change to aux input tuner disc uh, back to being on the disc. And then I adjusted the audio. You can just press audio and you can adjust bass, treble, the balance, the fader, equalizer, loud, S, I don't know what that means. There's the aux hookup and there's the USB port. And the um, on and off button is real nice. It's just like that. Oh no, it's not. It's right there. <laughs> That's the on and off button, power button. And then this button right here is where you can press this and take the faceplate off. Oh, that faceplate's really nice the way it fits on there. It's way better than my Pioneer. The faceplate is really nice. The filing and stuff, that it was annoying, but it does look nice in the end. I gotta say, it looks trim. It doesn't look too bad, in, in my opinion. So, for $44 shipped, and um, I got it. I ordered it on Monday. It came today, which is just Wednesday. Um, I think I'm happy with Crutchfield. It's installed. I like the way it looks and I'm happy. I hope this video helps you. If we flip this over, we can see where the clock is. This is the hazard light. And this is the electrical connection for the clock and then the other things that are on the display, which includes the airbag thing. So it looks like we're going to need little tiny Torx. I thought these were Torx, but I can't really see what they are. My smallest Torx, which is a Torx 8, uh, wouldn't work and neither would this Hex 2, but this here worked and that's a uh, 1 16th. So once you pull them out, you can just lift this whole board up. Don't be fooled by this burnout. Sometimes you'll see this burnout on a perfectly good LCD screen like this one up here. This is a uh, Forerunner clock and this, this works perfectly fine this clock does but it has that same kind of thing on the corner I don't I don't know what that is but I'll show you here on this what what causes the clock to kind of come in and come out and sometimes you hit the dash and it'll come on for a little while and then you turn the car off and you won't you hit the dash it'll turn on again here's how we can fix this all right so all you're gonna do is heat up your soldering gun soldering iron and you're just gonna go down here to these this group of resistors. We have 910, 910, 910, 910, 910, 270. And just, you can see I kind of made a mess there, but just reheat this solder up. You don't have to add new solder, remove it all the way. You don't have to take the 
resistors off the board. Just touch it for a little while with the soldering iron. If you just heat up the solder on those resistors, this group of six resistors here, you'll get your clock back. You're just going to barely touch this and warm it up, loosen the solder some, and then do it on each end for each of those six resistors there. And now it works for a little while. We'll see how long that lasts. Whatever caused it to fail in the first place will probably happen again. But it's a easy enough fix. I hope this helps.